dear student today we will discuss digestion in stomach before that we need to understand what is a stomach it is the widest part of alimentary canal and the anterior end of the stomach is connected to esophagus you can see the anterior end and the posterior end is connected to the intestine so this is the posterior end which is connected to du uh, denum which is the uh, small part a um, upper part of small intestine so it receives the food and posterior and uh, connected so from the posterior and, and the food uh, uh, went to the uh, small uh, intestine okay so if you see over here it, it is j shaped organ and the food from the esophagus enters the first part of stomach called cardiac it is the left broad upper part and it receives the food from esophagus the next upper portion is called fundus which is um, filled with the gases and this whole portion is called body or corpus which which is the main middle portion and this narrow portion is called pyloric antrum okay and at the end it has this sphincter called pyloric sphincter so anterior portion cardiac sphincters are, are there which guard the opening and uh, prevent the uh, uh, prevents the uh, food to go back into the esophagus and over here it prevents the pre-digested food to enter the duodenum and guard the opening of pyloric stomach into the duodenum so endocrine uh, cells are located here in the pyloric uh, antrum which secrete the hormone gastrin see usually if you see this whole stomach is lined by the mucosal cell and there are throughout these uh, there are certain uh, gland glandular cells which are present but specifically in the pyloric regions those glandular cells secrete the hormone gastrin okay now the gastric rugae which is present in the main or the middle part is uh, the raised part of gastric mucosa so it is a kind of modification of mucosa and this help to dilate the stomach to store food and also increase the surface area of digestion. Uh, Spinter muscles consist of circular muscle fiber arranged around an opening and which can be closed when the muscle contracts. So this is how the contraction and relaxation uh, leads to the opening and closing of uh, these muscles. So they guard the opening in this way. Now what are the main functions of stomach? Um, it helps in the partial digestion of food. Um, then it carry out mechanical digestion by churning due to the presence of ryuge. It kills certain bacteria due to the high acidic pH. It reduces castles intrinsic factor which help in the absorption of vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is actually absorbed in ileum. But whatever is required for its absorption is produced in the stomach that is castles intrinsic factor it carry out absorption of water alcohol aspirin and certain drug from its wall usually the absorption occur from the small intestine but in uh, certain cases the absorption occur directly from the stomach uh, mucosal cells it stores the food for four to five hours now let's discuss the gastric glands so where they are located the invagination of epithelium of mucosa form gastric pits and at the base of gastric pits gastric glands are present lamina propria contains gastric glands so basically they lie in the mucosa and the secretion of the gastric gland is called gastric juice basically there are glandular cells so the cells act as a gland like peptic cells, oxyntic cell or parietal cell, goblet cell or M cells, adjunct affin cells, endocrine cells or G cells. Peptic cell uh, chiefly they secretes the enzymes, digestive enzymes. The enzymes that are secreted in the inactive states are called zymogen. So usually the proteolytic enzymes are secreted in the inactive state such as renin in the inactive state as prodenin and pepsin in the inactive state as pepsinogen so 
and they also uh, secrete the enzyme uh, lipases gastric lipases gastric amylases then uh, okay uh, let's talk about these enzymes the pepsin actually when get activated so pepsin get activated uh, in presence of hcl pepsinogen is converted into pepsin pepsin is the active form of the enzyme it act on the protein and convert the protein to pepti, uh, protease and peptones and these are soluble uh, proteins so they are uh, um, easily uh, broke, break down the, uh, the uh, gastric lipase act on triglyceride and convert them into the fatty acid and glycerol gastric amylase convert the starch to maltose now there are oxantic cells which secrete hcl and castles intrinsic factor this factor is a kind of glycoprotein hcl it activate uh, the pepsin and pepsinogen enzyme it also act as antibacterial and it maintains the high acidic ph during the gastric digestion argentafin cells sorry a mucus or uh, am cells uh, they secrete uh, bicarbonate ion in the mucus uh, and uh, this bicarbonate ions they prevent the lining of the stomach to uh, get hydrolyzed by hcl action and it lubricate the gastric surface argentafin cells secrete serotonin which is a vasoconstrictor and endocrine cells uh, which are also known as g cells secrete the gastrin hormone and uh, stimulate the gastric glands to secrete the hcl okay so these cells or glands have different uh, functions now um, we will see that um, we will see that how uh, the digestion occurs in the stomach so when the food enters the stomach the argentafin cells secrete uh, the gastrin uh, and the g cell secrete the gastrin hormone so If you see the gastrin uh, stimulate the secretion of HCl from parietal cells and also the gastric enzymes um, are secreted the argentafin uh, sorry the serotonin which is secreted by argentafin cells stimulate the constriction of smooth muscles and uh, because of that contraction of the muscles the mechanical digestion occurs or you can say the churning of food occurs okay so parietal cell they produce uh, hcl hcl has various function we have already uh, discussed antibacterial maintain the ph 1.8 to 2.0 stop the action of salivary amylase and activate gastric enzymes soften the food and it denature many proteins and increases their exposure to pepsin enzyme which is the proteolytic enzyme so the hcl activate the pepsinogen to pepsin and now also activate the pro renin to renin both both are proteolytic enzyme the pepsin act, in, act on the protein and convert the protein to peptones or protease okay now once the pepsin is active it activate additional pepsinogen automatically and this is called autocatalytic activity and pepsin has no action on the protein called keratin of hair horn and nail so these are not uh, acted upon by the pepsin now if you see um, here we will consider the action of milk protein uh, which is casein uh, and uh, which is digested uh, by renin enzyme which is activate uh, pro renin to renin activation occur by hcl so here the casein of milk which is a soluble protein is converted into the insoluble called para casein in presence of enzyme renin and it forms the whey protein okay now this para casein um, it uh, um, combined with calcium and form calcium para caseinate which is curdling of milk or known as coagulation of milk and then this is acted upon by the pepsin and converted into the pepsin now casein is complete protein casein is a milk protein which is said to be complete protein as it provide all the essential amino acid and it is slow digesting uh, protein 
renin is absent in adult and the milk protein is digested by chymotrypsin in adult and it is present in the infants now we will just talk about the fat the gastric lipase act on the uh, fat and convert it into the fatty acids and glycerol and then it um, the gastric amylase act on the starch and convert it into the maltose then uh, in the next portion we'll be talking about the castles intensive factors so here we complete with the digestion all in the stomach thank you